Fly fishing for brown trout can be fun. Many of the rivers in the foil system, in addition to their salmon run, have a good head of brown trout. As a rough guide, these are usually the ones which do not have a run of sea trout. Brown trout can be fished for from opening day right to the end of the season. Choice of tackle should be as light as possible with a 3, 4 or 5 weight rod with a matching floating line being ideal in most situations. Light lines allow for delicate presentation of small flies on fine diameter tippet. Some anglers prefer a 5 or 6 weight rod and heavier tippet as grills can also take these small trout flies. The four main methods of fly fishing for brown trout are traditional wet fly, dry fly, nymphs or streamers and all require different techniques. With the exception of streamers which imitate fish, most other fly patterns used represent insects or other invertebrates which live in the river or have fallen onto the water. Both the nymphs that inhabit the bottom and the adult flies they hatch into form the main bulk of flies which are important to the fly fishermen. The majority of food items represented are insects, but some can be, for example, crustaceans such as freshwater shrimp, which live right on the riverbed. There are many insects blown onto the water, and these include hawthorn flies, black gnats, flying ants, and crane flies. In all methods of fly fishing, it is important to try to work out what the trout are feeding on, so that a fly representing their food can be selected by the angler. This is usually referred to as matching the hatch. Careful observation on the water surface, or the river bank, or rising fish may indicate a particular fly or invertebrate that they are feeding on. It is important to try and select something matching the same size, profile and colour as the natural. Wet fly fishing usually involves flies being cast across and down the river. It is usually practised in streamy water. When the flies are cast across the river, the current takes them downstream where they slowly sink. Sometimes they can be fished dead drift, but most anglers like to add a small amount of movement to give the flies some simulated life and are retrieved slowly. Wet flies can represent a variety of food forms ranging from nymphs, hatching insects, to drowned insects which have landed in the water. Most of the time they are a vague representation of a food form which trigger the fish to feed. When fishing for trout, it is important to try and determine why the trout may be lying in a particular area. Deeper water, streams, large rocks, bushes and trees offer some cover and protection from predators. Casting close to the bank in deeper water, behind large rocks and under bushes and trees can be good areas to target. On most occasions, a floating line is sufficient, although an intermediate line or sinking polyleader can also be beneficial, especially in faster or deeper streams. As trout rise at different times of the day, in all methods of fly fishing for trout, the angler should try to interpret where the trout may be lying and when and where the fish may be rising.
nymph fishing tries to represent the larval form of insects before they hatch out of the water, or other invertebrates which live there, such as shrimps. Most of these are found on the bottom of the river or close to it, so a weighted nymph pattern is used. However, as the natural nymphs ascend to the surface, just before they hatch out into their adult form, lighter, unweighted patterns can be used. Nymphs are usually cast upstream to allow the flies to sink deeper in the water while creating minimal drag from the line. The rod tip is held high and any stopping of the line or unusual line movement should initiate a strike. Dry fly fishing for many anglers is most fun as it involves the stalking of surface feeding trout. These fish are usually arising to hatching insects or insects which have landed in the water. It is important to be stealthy and careful wading upstream is advised. In order for dry flies to float, they are usually treated with floatant such as gink. Some flies do not require floatant as they have been tied with buoyant materials such as CDC. Dry fly also needs delicate and accurate casting. This is usually upstream casting to allow the fly to move downstream without the fly skating on the surface. This is seen as unnatural by the trout, usually causing rejection of the artificial fly. When dry fly fishing, the choice of dry fly can be critical as it should match the same colour, shape and size as the natural food, as during a rise, trout can be very selective on what they are feeding on.